Okay, round one, here we are. Um, I'm gonna keep it, it's not exactly a stellar hand. We are on the draw though, so maybe we can get some little more action-y, but we have at least a, a turn three morph and then some other spells, so blah. But hey, one of them is a foil forest, so that's also pretty sweet. So this is a little nonbo here, PS. <laughs> this and this though, not a nonbo. All right, opponent's playing red. Oh, I should have played the foil forest first, but I'm playing around land heat, you know, because that could happen in this format. I don't even know. I do know it's not in this format. Ooh, hello. Teamer opponent. Hey, secret plans. That's pretty fun. We'll go ahead and rock that guy out right away. Counterspell? Really? I think the only two mana counter spell. Oh, there's the one where you pay an extra one, right? That's the one mana uncommon that I think I have that I'm not playing. And then there's the the two mana counter spell that is uh, convert a mana cast four or more. And then there's cancel in the format. Okay, so just got a deck. Here we go. Firehead Cavalry, a little late to the party. My opponent must have just drawn the planes. Nice to have those guys ripped and ready for action right now. Um, let's see. So I'm playing a more for sure. The question is, what's my turn four play? Probably just attacking with the 3-2, flipping it, drawing a card. I presume? Yeah, I like that. It's nice to have a 2-3, thanks to our secret plans. Do I bother blocking? Trading the guys off? I don't think so. I get that card. Alright, my opponent's playing the own Morph Actione. Can we get a Jeskai Scout? You know, interesting. I could do Roar the Challenge, attack. Oh no, I don't have mana for that, never mind. That'd be a bad idea. My opponent double blocks. I think we just go ahead and attack in for three, draw a card. We get hit for three, possibly five back. But I think I'm okay with that. The only bummer is I don't really get to progress my board. Though really the only thing I have is to play another Morph or a Jeskai Wind Scout, which I'm not entirely stoked on. I do like that my uh, my Morphs trade fairly favorably, but my opponent could play a fifth land and look at this like super sweet mana that's happened. I think we just start going to Value Town, honestly. I paid it. Come on. There we go. Draw another land. Can't be blocked. Turn five next turn. What do I want to do? I just play the Whirlwind Adept. Turns my Ferocious on. Maybe just play a 2-3 of the Glacial Stalker. What's my opponent have here? Oh! Flipping the dude around, are we now? All right, we take six. Ouch. All right, how do I combat that? I need a Glacial Stalker. So I think we go ahead and play the Glacial Stalker. We have our two, three. We can block this. We're taking another five, which is going to hurt. But then we'll be able to flip the Stalker after that. Do I want the Pine Walker down instead? Yeah, I have to have the Pine Walker, because this is a 4-5. I thought they were both 5-5s. Five All right, pay attention, Ryan. Pay attention. So we're going to get some, some, some boinks, which is not great.
It is kind of fun that we get to attack in with this guy and then morph it and untap it. Man, my opponent's just drawing perfect mana here. Please don't have a removal spell. Ouch, this is gonna hurt. Because I do need to trade these guys off. Oh, that's good. I mean, it's not great, but at least, like, my opponent's not attacking with a fired cavalry. Instead, I'm just taking a huge eight. Oh, is going for it. Yeah, don't do that. That's silly of you. All right, no blocks. Ouchie. So if I attack in with both, opponent takes a hit of three. If my opponent tries to block, I have the five five. It takes out both of these guys. I'm just kind of signaling that I have something, though. I have to keep the Mystic back, so I can only block one dude. So I'll attack with the Morph, because my opponent's tapped out. He would take out... If my opponent does choose to double block, though... I'm stuck with this 5-5. Five five. And I don't have great ways to deal with that. I might be able to draw into something, though. We'd have to double block with the Glacial Stalker. Yeah, I guess that's our backup. We're down to one, play a Glacial Stalker. <laughs> Not great. All right. I'm going to take five while these guys trade off. Untap that creature. Okay. So after declaring attacks, we do this. Huh. Oh, this has trample two with that. Well, it's a good thing. I'm eating a duder here. Oh my gosh. Alright, so we gotta draw a card. Another mystic. My dude gets to be untapped. We gotta blocks. Gotta block this guy. Do I block this guy? Take one damage and trade my dudes? There's a 4-3 left with first strike on the battlefield. I'm not in love with that, but otherwise I'm down to 4, and the blocks are still going to be coming. Is there anything I have? Not really. Yeah, I don't know. Do I block this guy? Because it... I'm kind of dealing with the free Weapon Master by double blocking. I guess we'll just play the Stalker next turn. Yeah. We just need to clear the board and try to get ahead here. Don't love it, but sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. Opponent could be out of cards, so that's nice. Alright, so. Could play the Glacial Stalker. Gets this guy out. I think I have to. Then I only have one mana left, which kind of sucks. Um, otherwise, I could... Yeah, let's just do it. It's a little bit annoying not getting the... Uh, getting the card out of it. But we just need to stay alive, so there you have it.
That's just the nature of where I'm at right now. Because if we can stabilize the board, we have actually, you know, another uh, morph guy to draw, another creature. We have a bunch of other threats. Oh no, treasure cruise? That would be bad. Probably already has a lot of cards. Hooting mandrels. Well, Glacial Stalker keeps him back. But my opponent's going to attack me down to one. Ooh, and has a Jeskai student. All right, so we need to pump out... Oh, wow, lots of cards. All right, we need to also pump out our dudes. We don't have that many, but we're going to give her a go. Good news is we can Roar of Challenge away something if we want to. Might be correct. Just might be. Getting a Monastery Flock, though, at 2-3 to block and then flip as needed is kind of cool. There's a lot to think about here. So if I pay three for War of the Challenge, I eat one of these guys, which is basically a removal spell at that point, and keeps the, a block up, right? And then I have only four mana left to combat the other guys. So I can do a smoke teller and that's it. So I don't have enough mana to do a roar and uh, stay alive. So what's three, four, five? Man, we have just, we can only do two and I have to do two, right? Glacial Crasher, well, Glacial Crasher will have to block one thing. We can play the smoke teller, but then this guy becomes a three one trampler so that might be a point of damage, and then one of the fours gets through, and I'm screwed. I think the play is Smoke Teller plus Monastery Flock, Morph It, Stay Alive. I think that's what we have to do right there. I think that's what we have to do. If that's the case, I have a Smoke Teller out to block the Fire of Calvary and take one point of damage down to four. Monastery Flock goes ahead and blocks and flips and blocks one of the four fours. Just Sky Student has to be pumped quite a bit to do full on lethal, but it's our best chance of staying alive. I firmly believe. And my opponent may not suicide in with that with this these many blockers then. That's the turn. And then maybe... Okay, my opponent's whiffing a little bit. Don't know if there's one little finisher card in hand. Yep, there seems to be, unless... Oh no, it's a pump. That's kind of good. Kind of. Oh no, there is more. Oh, wow, this is not just a one-time activation. All right, so... Am I dead? What are the attacks here? Right. Okay. Let's go to blocks. Now, if I do this guy here, I need to eat one of the guys. This guy here, which will flip and he'll stay alive. This guy here, they trade. I go down to one. Oof. That's dangerous. Alternatively, put the morph in front of the Fire of Cavalry. Put this guy in front of the man. No, because that's. Tra well, I could switch it around, but put the Stalker in front of the Mandrels. This guy in front of the First Striker. It'll die this guy will still this guy will die but then the fire of cavalry stays alive so do i want to take that extra four damage and go down to one i think i do i really think i do i think it will be worth it my opponent's tapped out so i'm not dead this turn so i have other ways to get stuff through yep that's the plan those are the blocks do it. 
Draw me cards. Seeing Bell Strike. Not entirely great. <laughs> Makes my opponent use all the mana, but my opponent has all the mana to use. Alright, down to one. Do I have life gain? I don't think so. Alright, so we have some defenses, and now we have a number of cards to be had. We just need to make sure that we have backups against the Hooting Mandrels, which is kind of what the Monastery Flock is for, right? And some good blocks. So how many creatures can we actually get out right now? We have 5, 6, 7, 8 mana. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So the nice thing is the Roland Edups at least trade. Problem is, if they're going to trade, I die. So we need more toughness than anything else. This could become a 2-3, which isn't particularly exciting, but it does block pretty well. 3, plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah, it looks like we're going to play the Whirlwind Adept and Mystic of the Hidden Way as a morph to get the more toughness online. Because at least that way Whirlwind Adept can block pretty well a Jeskai student. Really precarious. We're hanging in there. And we can remove this threat with like maybe a roar of challenge attacking with Glacial Stalker next turn. I'll feel a lot better. Oh gosh, another Trampler, dude. Gooey. We got a lot of those. I guess they're better than I thought. I don't know. But hey, look, we're stabilized, sort of. Alright, so we've already seen this guy can be a 5 1 trampler. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yeah, we're going to put a singing bell strike on it, because then it costs 6. It costs 10 just to get it pumped once. And my opponent doesn't have that much land. So, that's that game plan. What else are we doing? Attacking with the Glacial Stalker and a Roar of Challenge in order to take out the Hooning Mandrels. I like that game plan. So three, that's five. Then we have four more mana. I can play the Jeskai Wind Scout or turn off, turn up the Morph. I'm going to turn up the Morph and draw a card at the end of my opponent's next turn and start going on the uh, offensive. Okay, one, two, three. I don't think my opponent has anything. Oh, that's cool. This guy's a... Do I attack for five here? I think I do. I think it's a little greedy, though. Because they're all going to be able to... They're all blocking. I can get in for five. I can get in for six, really. This guy's tapped down. But then... I only have two blockers and one kind of removal spell or, you know, a lot of mana. I think it's just a little too risky for me, unfortunately. My opponent can have the arrow or whatever. But it's indestructible, so that's okay. I wonder something that taps this... Uh, so my opponent can't block with the Hootie Mandrels. Got to be careful of time. I've been taking so long. Um, if I lose this and I have to win two more games, that's going to be really rough. But that's part of this set and part of me being a slow player. Illegal blocking must be much blocked. My opponent's trying not to block. You have to block, my friend. That's what the card says. So my opponent's just desperately trying not to block right now. All right, there you go. And that is definitely the order. I want them in. I want the Hooning Mandrels out of here. Cool. Yay. Yes, I'm missing my prowess triggers, but uh, I don't care. <laughs> I just want to stay alive. And we're going to turn our morph up, draw another card, and then hopefully start to be able to bash through 
and start getting some damage through if my opponent doesn't have a whole lot. One direct damage spell kills me. First strike, okay, that's a card, that's a threat. Yay, that's a good card. Incremental growth, that's also a good card. All right, uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Try to think quickly here, pay this for three, turn it up when I want for three, that's six, five, six, and we have three more, so we'll play Just Sky, Wind Scout as well, and then probably bash through next turn. What am I attacking with right now? One, two, three, I'm attacking with only one creature. This is the best blocker, but this gets an extra point of damage through, which I'm really excited for. Uh, this guy blocks okay, but trades, or does a prowess thing. Yeah, we'll keep this guy for blocks. We'll just attack in for three right now. And that's the game plan. Okay, we might be able to control out right now. Thing is being at one life means we have to be placed so carefully. By we, I mean I, for the record. And I'm definitely putting three plus one plus one counters on Mystic next turn once we get more creatures out. That's for sure. For sure! I mean, if my opponent gets a direct damage spell, I'm going to be so sad. Because I think we fought through this enough to be able to stabilize. All right. Don't want to cast. Don't want to pay green for it. We're gonna be able to flip it over. Who do we bounce? The Bondkin we bounce. I'm more scared of that than the Just Guy student. They're both lethal if either of them get through, but the first strike is more dangerous in combat against other creatures. No, don't be direct damage. Ooh, a flyer. Okay. Do I get rid of that guy? I have I have flying defense though. I don't think it matters. Um I have one, two flyers. Three flyers, really? Target creature to its owner's hand. I guess both. I mean, whatever. We're just getting one blocker out of the way. Yes, I want to use that ability. Yes, I want to draw a card. Okay, cool. We have Ferocious online. We're going to take out the Leaping Master. We're going to do our incremental growth. On target creature. Which one do I want? I want one on this dude. I want two on this guy because he's going to attack. One, two. And then I want choose third creature, this guy. Right. Prowesses go through. Our guys go through. We're going to kill a Leaping Master with a Savage Punch. Um, we'll go ahead and let it be the Jeskai Wind Scout. Make him huge and then kill for lethal. Nice. Say goodbye. Go to combat and attack. There we go. Whew! Got back in it. Just barely. That was fun. That was hard. That was fun. All right, we have eight minutes. We have half as much clock as my opponent, so super scary there. All right, Singing Bell Strike. Is this going to work against my opponent? I feel like it does. I feel like we have a little bit more pressure. 
my opponent doesn't have a lot of aggression, or not a lot of aggression, doesn't have a lot of um, high casting cost stuff. My opponent has a lot of early drops, so I think seeing Bell Strike will be fantastic. Waking the Bear can get my opponent pretty well, but I don't think I want to pull out um, like a Savage Punch or, again, the Singing Bell Strikes. I think we're good on that aggression side. It is just, uh, what was the one we're getting? The Whirlwind Adept, and that does just trade so easily with my opponent. And I much prefer the Morphs. Your Tanner Shell just shuts down everything also. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. All right, play quickly. Let's play quickly. Uh, one, two, three, singing bell strike with some morphs, and then, yeah, we're good. We're keeping. Mulligan's to six. Goes down to five. That's not good for my opponent, especially on the draw. All right, we play an island. My opponent has a greedy mana base. Do we see any, uh, but of course has a play. I'm happy to see Bell Strike that now, since I'm gonna be having plays fairly regularly, and it is a really good card. I just wanna stay alive, and I have other ways to deal with other cards later. I don't think my opponent's going to be able to play a whole bunch of cards that regularly. What does this cost to go up? Three, four, five. So it costs five to morph. This costs five. This costs three. And Enoch Bonkin. Another one. All right. There you go, buddy boy. Um. All right. I think we'll just play the Mystic. I think I care the least about it. I like my big beefy dudes for later. Hooded Hydra. Uh, maybe I wanted to do that. Well, that's the next one I'll play because I definitely want to turn him up on turn five. That's just a good card. Five five. Then when it dies, get a bunch of dudes. Heck yeah. Opponent's gonna go ahead and outlast. Go for it. Ooh, and even that'll be very nice in the nearest of futures. For now, though, let's attack for two, because I'm not blocking the first striker. Just going to put some damage in. And then we'll cast this guy face down. Hope he doesn't die to anything. My opponent was able to hit all land drops, despite mulling to five on the play, and getting some colors online. So that's pretty OK. So this is going to be a B. We're going to be able to, uh, if my opponent doesn't do a whole lot, if we take three and then attack back for seven, ouch. And I'm definitely getting this guy into a 5-5 five, five next turn, one way or another. Five. Let's see if my opponent has anything tricky here. Could be. I don't know the format that has the combat tricks that makes this a bad attack. I don't. I really don't know. Looks like nothing. Maybe I just play my five five then. I'm greedy. It just makes the race so strong in my favor. There's no way my opponent can be attacking with the Bonkin. And I want to end this game quickly based on time. And my opponent being um, a little hosed on cards. The cavalry. It's fine. Outlasting. That's fine. We're going to Ice Feather Aven the Bonkin when it gets annoying. It's attacking with both. My opponent can chump if wanting to. Maybe just play two morph creatures this turn. Get a pine walker and an ice feather even down. Just maximizes our mana the best.
Come on, Mythic Rare, do your job. That's interesting. Why wouldn't you block... This doesn't have Trample. All right. Definitely want this guy cast, because his turning face-up ability is just too, too fantastic. Um, yeah, let's go with this guy. We can get some blowouts online. It's a big old dude. I don't mind taking four here. The Ice Feather Aven is going to flip and get rid of it very soon. We could take six total. Oh, Hoonie Mandrills. Hoonie Mandrills, all right. But we have such a strong lethal crackback. Yeah, my opponent's playing the uh, that game. All right, so four, five. This costs three. This costs three. So if I, I'm definitely playing the Ice Feather Aven and bouncing one of these two. It's got to be the Bondkin because it is first strike. So that guy's gone. Attacking for two in the air. This guy is then lethal, so has to be blocked by the Mandrills killing it. And then my other guys are lethal as well. So I think we got this. Ugh, I just did it the wrong way. Goodbye, Enoch Bonkin. And then, yeah, my opponent sees it right on the wall. All right, that was fun. I guess it's fun when you win, no matter what. But definitely fun playing with new cards. I love this Ice Feather Aven. Last game was long and drawn out, but I really enjoyed it. Uh, I'm looking forward to messing around the deck a little bit more in round two. We'll see if it holds up against a less greedy opponent that has, uh, you know, we got pretty easy on this second game here with the, the mole and the tough mana base for my opponent. So, onwards and forwards.